Um, I have with me Mr. Afro Raymond, and we are going to talk about uh, this uh, memorandum of understanding that would have been signed with the government of Trinidad and Tobago and Sandals. Yes, yes. Right? I know um, in March you had requested um, this memorandum of understanding through the Freedom of Information Act. You did yeah. not get it, so no. you went to court and you were able to obtain this memorandum yes. of understanding. And yes. you are saying that uh, this document contains things that can be detrimental to Trinidad and Tobago. Right. Well, first of all, good morning to all the viewers and good morning to yourself. Good morning. Thanks to TDT for having me on, on board to do this show. And it's kind of important that we're talking about the Tobago Sandals situation now. And just seconds ago, we had those schoolgirls singing Parang mm -hmm. because it all reminds me of the Parang season, you know. I don't want to start off with an off-color joke, but one of the things we know about Parang is when you listen to the singers, what we hear is lie, lie, lie. <laughs> and the audience will just go sigh, sigh, sigh. So we're getting on the Tobago Sandals now. The point I want to make is that I applied to the MOU on the 27th of February this year, mm -hmm. and it took them until the 28th of November, a mere two weeks ago, to release the MOU. I had to take them to court. This yeah. is the state, the office of the Prime Minister, and the office of the Prime Minister claimed through the Permanent Secretary and later on through the Chief State Solicitor that in fact the document was a secret document, it contained confidentiality clauses, and that in fact to reveal that document would in fact poison the negotiations, mm -hmm. which raises a very important question, it's a pregnant question about why has it been released. You could look at it and say it's a, it's a, it's a gesture of magnanimity, a gesture of transparency, and the document has been released and that's in the public interest. And in fact, I take the opportunity to thank the people who made the decision, the people in the cabinet and the advisors for releasing the document, yeah. because we now have a picture of, of just how, just the perils facing the country in relation to the Tobago Sandals deal. So how bad is it really? Well, the deal commits Trinidad and Tobago, our treasury, which is under a lot of strain at the moment, it commits our treasury to building the resort. And in fact, the phrase they use is ready for occupancy. So we're actually designing, building, fitting and furnishing the whole resort at our expense. It also commits to granting certain concessions and incentives, that's the phrase they use in the agreement. Oh, the Sandals Group. So we have the Sandals Group putting in no capital, zero capital. We're putting in all the capital, and we are going further. We're putting an egg on top, and we're giving concessions and incentives. And for those people who may be holding comfort from the notion that there is going to be employment, because we're in a period of high unemployment. Yeah. It was mentioned a little while ago in your, in your segment. You, you referred to some political statements on that question. The actual agreement allows Sandals a free hand as to who they hire. So if they, if they open that resort and they decide to hire people who are non-locals, non-Trinidadians or non-Tobagonians, that is entirely within their rights under the terms of the MOU. In addition, people have talked about things about suppliers. You know, there was agricultural produce and people providing services to the hotel and so on. They also have a free hand where that is concerned. So they can bring in their own people to do the repair and maintenance of the hotel and they can procure their own supplies as they see fit. So in fact, all of the, all of the areas of the, of the agreement that may have balanced out the money we put in, mm -hmm. I believe those areas of the agreement are written up in ways that allow Sanders the discretion to do as they please. So this deal is not going to benefit Trinidad and Tobago? That's I, what you're my interpretation is, is that it's detrimental. So, so how do we fix that? How do we, as a people, knowing this information mm -hmm. now, how mm -hmm. do we get the government to probably, if at all, change mm -hmm. certain things so that it will benefit us? Well, that is really the question. Eh? The question is, now that, we, now that we know what we know, where exactly are we? Can we go a layer down into the, into the puzzle and see where we are? Are we at a point where the thing is irreversible? And in fact, it cannot be reversed. Or are we still at the point where the matter is still under discussion? If it is still under discussion, there is room for us to make an intervention. And there are things that need, need to happen. For example, one thing I'd like to see is that if we are investing $3 billion, more or less, to build this resort, I would like to see that there is a, a, a minimum rate of return for our investment What in, in the manner that you would have for a preference share. We need to know what is our rate of return. Is it 8%? Is it 9% on our money? It cannot be that we put that money up and it's as and when and catch as catch can, or as Mr. Imbert says in his favorite political peacock, like a brand tub. You put your hand down inside and you pull up and you see what is in the brand tub. It has to be that we have a proper rate of return for our investment. Mm -hmm. And the arrangements need to be arrangements that facilitate that. 
and not just facilitate the, the profit makers of the, of the private capitalists who've invested no capital. So, so how, I, what are you going to do? Having this information, you fought for this information, you got it. What are you going to do to get Trinidad and Tobago involved? Because, as you said, this is detrimental to us. Yes, well, it's a campaign about information. And, of course, you would understand that I can't say exactly what I'm going to do. What I can tell you <laughs> is that I'm going to be in Tobago on Thursday, that is, this week, Thursday, the 13th mm -hmm. of December, at 5.30 at the Scarborough Public Library. A public meeting has been organized for me to address some of these issues to the public in Tobago, and I'd be speaking to these questions at greater length. So I'll continue bringing the points to the public and, and hoping that people can get ourselves together and, and, and focus on what are the things we want, either we want the deal or not, and if it is we want it, what can be done at this point to improve the conditions in the public interest? Yeah, and, and then there is the, the whole political aspect of mm -hmm. it. You, you bring this information, yes. the government has been, been defending sandals. Yes. Um, what if they say that what you're saying is a misinterpretation and you're giving misinformation? Well, they would, they would say things like that. I mean, we had, we had ministers in the past talking about uh, sophisticated investors. There were other ministers who spoke about the way business really runs. But what the agreement does, it gives us a chance to see how business really runs. Mm -hmm. And it gives us a chance to see how sophisticated investors really fix their things. And we know that we know that we have to do better. So in fact, I'd like to hear another interpretation of this agreement. Um, since, since the agreement was published on Wednesday, the 28th of uh, November of, of 2018, yeah and so on, we have had a kind of radio silence on this question. I'd like to hear them, the people who are promoting and defending this project, now that we have the outline in the MOU, tell us where are, where are the benefits, where is Trinidad and Tobago going to recover that $3 billion? How is this all meant to work? All right, well, thank you very much, you Mr. Very much. Raymond, for coming in and sharing that information with us, and we will definitely see, get the answers that Trinidad and Tobago needs as yes. it relates to the Memorandum of Understanding.